Hello and welcome to all of you. I hope you have been uh, doing. Just a second, guys. Let me fix out all these uh, technical things. So I hope that uh, all of you have been staying healthy and happy and uh, studying very well. So today we are going to discuss about the clinical case scenarios, which are very important from the perspective of your. Uh, entrance for the post graduation which is going to be INICET or uh, it is going to be a NEET PG. These clinical case scenarios are also going to help you for uh, the people who are appearing for the foreign medical graduate examination. Right. So guys I just uh, need only one second I need to connect my uh, this pencil. Just give me a second. Uh, meanwhile I hope many people are coming also they are joining us. Right. So yeah. It's connected now. So let's let's start guys with the very first. Right. So guys in the chat box, I am expecting all the questions of yours. Please acknowledge me. Uh, about the audio and the visuals everything is okay or not I am waiting for your uh, replies only then I am going to start yeah Rishi Raj good evening and uh, a good day greetings yes Dr. Alpna everything is okay Deepak okay okay Okay, guys. Nita Samudram, very good evening. Uh, so it means the audio AVs are very well fine. So let's start very uh, with the very first question that is from you know the hematology. <coughs> so what does this question say? See, I always tell all of you that there is a clue in the question and what is the clue? The only story lies that how well we can, you know, uh, catch up that clue. So let's read this MCQ first of all. What is this clue saying? Uh, you order a blood film on a patient with macrocytosis. It shows megaloblastic cells. What is the most likely cause of the abnormality among the given options? See guys, every question has four options right now you have to be very smart or you have to be you know very intelligent enough to segregate all these options so let's see what are these options vitamin b12 deficiency pregnancy hypothyroidism alcohol so yes i am waiting for your replies please tell me what should be the answer over here hanji kya answer aana chahiye yahan pe sector world your answer is right okay so the first very important answer to understand is this now i am explaining you that here what do we have we do have what kind of cells over here we do have megaloblastic cells here it is written over here megaloblastic cells megaloblastic cells are there right now what is this megaloblastic is going to tell us this megaloblastic earth cells in which nuclear maturation is delayed. Do remember this here in megaloblastic cells that you know that cells the maturation is delayed first of all then I will come to maturation is delayed right as compared to the cyto within the this maturation is delayed within the cytoplasm within cytoplasm so this is another mcq which can be asked straightly to from you 
Now, in all the other options given except vitamin B12 deficiency, there is no delay. However, in vitamin B12 deficiency, synthesis is delayed. Now, why synthesis is delayed? Now, the answer over here is vitamin B12 deficiency. Here, synthesis is delayed. Synthesis is delayed. Now, why the synthesis is delayed, my dear friend? As B12 requires this. The cells are there become megaloblastic and the rest of the causes of the megaloblastic cells include like folate deficiency and cytotoxic drugs. So here they had macrocytosis and megaloblastic cells because the synthesis delayed in the vitamin B12 deficiencies. That's why the abnormality in the question is likely to be B12. Okay. So let's move to the next question that a 30 year old female comes to you with the history of pulmonary embolism understand the concept over here so the first very clue is what pulmonary embolism which he had two months prior now this is an another very history this history is very important what they are saying is this that she is having a history only she is not coming in an acute phase of pulmonary embolism had she been coming in pulmonary embolism acute phase she would have gone into hypotension tachycardia chest pain might be she had been gone in circo so just to give you a clue read the question very carefully what they are saying that there is only a history of pulmonary embolism which she has been two months prior she is on warfarin therapy absolutely right because we know that to prevent the pulmonary embolism or to prevent the coagulation further means uh, uh, to make the blood thinner we have to give warfarin to prevent the pulmonary embolism now she says that she has missed her period and her UPT is again positive. Now guys, you have a open book in front of you. Now you are going to tell me what is going to be the answer, which among the following is the correct decision. Yes guys, can you please tell me which among the following is going to be the correct decision. The option number A is switch to low molecular weight heparin immediately. Switch to low molecular weight heparin until week 12 switch to low molecular weight heparin after 12 weeks or switch to low molecular weight heparin after 24 weeks yes guys come on please tell me yes guys i am waiting for your replies uh Ashi, you have to rethink your answer okay so now your time is over. Now let me before I come to the question or before I come to the correct option, let me explain you something about warfarin. So guys, we know that warfarin is unsafe in pregnancy. Unsafe in pregnancy. After six weeks. So after six weeks of pregnancy, warfarin is not recommended. It is unsafe. It can cause teratogenicity, right? And my dear friend, and during the last four of uh, and even and during not just after six weeks and during last four weeks of pregnancy as well. Right? Hanji. Ab bataiye kya karna hai aapne. Now I have given you the clue. Uh, chapter word. You, you need to rethink once again. Your option is not right. I have given you the two very good clues. That. Warfarin is unsafe. During. The last four weeks of the pregnancy and after six weeks of pregnancy so guys what we are going to do is that we have to switch to the low molecular weight heparin we have to switch to low molecular weight heparin right at a very correct time right now what is the correct time here in this case even the patient was having pulmonary embolism and she was taking warfarin over here so switching to you know uh, uh, this one uh, uh, what do you call it as 
लो मोलिकुलर वेट ही पेरेन इमिडिएटली विल बी द राइट आंसर ओवर हियर सो स्विचिंग टू द लो मोलिकुलर वेट ही पेरेन इमिडिएटली विल बी द राइट आंसर ओवर हियर सी गाइज वाइड इज है ओकेजनली पेशेंट्स ऑन अ लॉन्ग टर्म वार्फरेन आर स्विच फॉर द फाइनल मंथ ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी अबाउट टू रीच अपॉन द फाइनल मंथ ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी बट हेयर पेरेंट इज ऑफन इजियर टू मैनेज राइट पर्टिकुलरली इफ एसिस्टेड डिलीवरी और सीजेरियन सेक्शन इज रिक्वायर्ड दैट्स वाई वी आर स्विचिंग इट इमीडिएटली ओके जी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट अ फोर्टी ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल नॉन कोस ऑफ नॉन केस ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम एंड मेम्ब्रेनस नेफ्रोपैथी जस्ट प्रेजिडेंट टू इट्स नॉट प्रेजिडेंट प्रेजेंट्स टू यू presents to you with a complaints that her left leg is swollen and has an increased in the last two days she has 4.5 g of 24 hr protein loss in her urine on average right keratodoppler was done which suggested a left leg dvt which of the following is the most likely cause yes guys what is the most likely cause हाँ जी बताइए आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाईज हाँ जी गाइस आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाईज यस देवराज सरकार absolutely said right anyone else haan ji ashish ji uh you need to rethink once again suraj you need to okay okay good Ibiza, absolutely right. Okay, guys. So, see, guys. Ah, uh, now we know that the patient is in nephrotic syndrome. Here, you see, where is this patient going on? Patient is in nephrotic syndrome. Now, we know that this nephrotic syndrome not only just leads to the loss of albumin. So, what is happening over here? Loss of albumin in nephrotic syndrome. Right now, where is this albumin is going on? Albumin is losing in the urine understand the concept over here see i am just explaining you in a shorter manner see this is our glomeruli right this is suppose that gbm is over here right below to this this is the gbm over here any this is the afferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole this is the afferent and this is the efferent blood is coming from here and it is going to pour over here now what happens in over here that initially guys what happens over here understand by concept over here very easy to understand that here we do have a gbm glomerular basement membrane and this glomerular basement membrane is negatively charged right what it is it is negatively charged so negative negative repels each other right now in nephrotic syndrome what happens my dear friend there is a loss of the proteins particularly that of the micro albumins right albumin is mainly lost over here why does it happens over here initially when there is a destruction of the gbm or there is a negative charge system which is destroyed over here the protein start oozing into the urine now what is the role of this albumin the role of the albumin is basically what that it keeps attracting the water and it keeps the water to pushing it into the intravascular circulation i repeat what is the role of the albumin it sucks the water from the outside and it sends the fluid back into the circulation or intravascular volume is being maintained by the albumin now in this question it is written over here that the patient is having a loss of how much my dear friend kitna loss ho raha hai yahan pe dekho there he is having a loss of 4.5 g 4.5 g per 24 hours right so it is significant loss secondly they have given you the history that the patient is having a dvt now another clue is what dvt deep vein thrombosis now what are the causes of dvt first of all dvt main causes yes can you please tell me what are the causes of the dvt yes i am waiting for your reply 
I am asking a question. Causes of DVT. Before I explain, can you please tell me? Yes, come on, come on, guys. हाँ जी, बताइए. Okay, immobilization one. Hypercoagulable state, very good. What next? Stasis, okay. Restriction of movement, okay. Thrombophlebitis, agreed. Now, guys, always do remember causes of DVT can be segregated into three parts. One is acquired causes, one is genetic causes, and the third one is mixed causes. All right. So the first one, acquired causes are like surgery or trauma. सर्जरी और ट्रोमा इमोबिलाइजेशन इमोबिलाइजेशन राइट मेलेग्नेंसी मेलेग्नेंसी ईस्ट्रोजन थेरेपी ईस्ट्रोजन थेरेपी इवन प्रेगनेंसी यू नो इवन प्रेगनेंसी राइट सो दीज आर द एक्वाइड कोजेस now what are the causes for genetic causes what are the genetic causes now understand the concept over here first is anti thrombin deficiency anti thrombin deficiency then very important this is given in the options also protein c and s deficiency protein c and s deficiency factor header 5 leiden deficiency right then we have mixed causes and in mixed causes what do we have we do have hyperhomocysteinemia hyperhomo cystinemia so guys these all are the causes for a dvt now the patient is having dvt among all the options what is the option which suits us the best over here see i told you that protein c and s is the main cause for causing a dvt and basically this can lead to a hypercoagulable state and this can lead to a deep vein thrombosis over here so here my dear friends Uh, in nephrotic syndrome dvt is a common problem and the cause of this dvt is because the patient might have landed up in a low protein c or s deficiency among the options given there is we have an answer that protein s is the answer over here okay ji let's move to the next question a 65 year old man who is the drug abuser is admitted with endocarditis echocardiography suggests of large vegetation which of the organism is the most frequent causative agent ha ji bataiye Hanji guys please go ahead tell me the answer drug abuser hai this is another very important clue yes guys i am waiting for your replies yes rudrakshi malhadar i appreciate your answer you have given me a right answer classic sir uh, you need to reconsider bushan sir absolutely thumbs up to you guys stuti sahu very good okay guys i appreciate who are giving me the right answers 
and i am appreciating the people who are even giving me the wrong answer at least guys you are thinking i am so happy at least you are trying to uh, you know sort out the things so keep on trying this okay now let's come to the discussion over here so a person who is a drug abuser right now in this particular question it is not mentioned that the patient is taking iv drugs he is taking oral drugs there can be a mode of the you know intake of the drugs it can be iv it can be uh, by a snip form it can be orally right anyhow the patient is a drug this one and patient is having endocarditis right echocardiography is suggestive of a large large vegetation now guys the philococcus aureus option number a is the right answer over here now why the right answer over here even in harrison you know uh, the latest edition you can find davidson even in robins pathology it is clearly written that approximately 50 to 70 percent of the cases who are you know history of uh, uh, iv drug abuse who are having a iv drug abuse iv drug abuser they land up into a large vegetations in the heart and on culture taking the staphylococcus aureus is the most likely organism in 50 to 70% cases now this is 50 to 70% of the cases right now this means what about the rest of the cases about streptococcal pneumonia staphylococcus epididermis streptococcus bovis these organism do also cause endocarditis but among the options given the weightage will be gone to this 50 to 70% who is causing this one right so please do remember in particularly iv drug abusers endocarditis is mainly caused by staph aureus right okay ji so let's go to question number next one a 70 year old man non case of ischemic heart disease right presented presented to the track it's triage not track presented to the triage triage means beta emergency right with complaints of palpitation and feeling of light headedness on examination he has mild edema he has mild edema over the ankles and has a bilateral crackles on auscultation right his bp is 138 by 80 and his ventricular rate is more than 190 on monitor ecg shows monomorphic ventricular tachycardia potassium is 4.3 normal range of potassium is 3.5 to 4.5 so it means it is in normal level magnesium is 0.6 right which of the following is the next most appropriate step in the treatment haan ji guys bataiye Hanji guys I am waiting for your replies Okay I am giving you the normal range of magnesium also the magnesium normal range is approximately 1.8 to 2.4 Milligram per deciliter. This is the normal range of the magnesium. Potassium is three point five to four point five. Hanji. Okay guys classic your answer is right rudrakshi right okay now put your pens down and let's revise this mcq once again and let's see what is hidden in this mcq over here right first of all guys understand the concept patient is a known case of ischemic heart diseases means ischemic heart diseases it is quite possible that his left ventricle is not functioning properly is it okay in ischemic heart disease because maybe he had a problem 
in any of the corollaries and main we know that led is the culprit in any kind of ischemic heart disease so led is supplying the left ventricle and it is not functioning properly so the might be i am saying might be the patient is in you know um, in failure right in heart failure now why i am saying the patient is in heart failure because on examination you see that the patient is having mild edema over the ankles and we know that the patient if the patient is in heart failure patient can land up into edema right although it is a, a, a more of a sign of a right heart failure but yes it can occur now but bilateral crackles on auscultation now this is very important bilateral crackles on auscultation means heart is not pumping properly right the blood is getting collected in the lungs and that's why the patient is having crackles over here but the good news over here guys that the patient is having a controlled blood pressure 138 by 80 see at the age of 70 years 140 90 bp is considered to be a normal but here the patient is having 138 bp so the blood pressure is normal but but understand the concept over here the ventricular rate is more than 190 and some more the ecg is showing a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia so these are the two things now we have to give the drug which can control the heart rate right which can control the heart rate as well it can take care of the failure part right so what options do we have secondly my dear friend see i told you the normal range of the potassium is 3.2 to 4.5 now here the potassium is 4.3 over here so we no need to worry about the potassium over here what needs to be worried is about the magnesium level why magnesium level needs to be worried about because the normal range is 1.8 to 2.4 mg per deciliter whereas in the mcq what it is it is given it is only how much 0.6 so what we have to give we have to give anti arrhythmic drug because the patient is in ventricular tachycardia and some more we have to give the magnesium supplementation over here so that's why the answer is going to be amiodarone and magnesium see guys why the answer uh, much of the people have given me the d answer over here also see urgent dc cardioversion is only given in unstable patients where the blood pressure is on a lower side right that's why we are not giving the urgent cardioversion because here the blood pressure is 138 oblique 80 mg per dc liter so here the answer is going to be amiodarone and magnesium चले आगे ओके जी हाँ जी पेशेंट नेम श्याम जस्ट गाइज सेकेंड सी गाइज आई हैव पुट दीज टू क्वेश्चन टूगेदर आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू प्लीज रीड दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट एंड i will wait for 30 seconds i will show you the next question so that while answering the next question you will keep these two questions continuously okay so the question is patient named sham babu who is a chronic smoker was brought to the hospital with acute shortness of breath and left sided chest pain which is non radiating which he developed after falling from bike right on auscultation his saturation is 72% on room air and his blood pressure is 150 88 heart rate is 110 per minute auscultation is suggestive of absent breath sounds and absent vocal parameters which of the following is the likely cause this is part a of this question this is part a of this question read this carefully once again let's revise this mcq first patient named sham babu who is a chronic smoker was brought to the hospital with acute shortness of breath acute shortness of breath right with left sided chest pain which is non radiating very important there is a history of fall from the bike this is very important saturation is on a lower side blood pressure is on a higher side heart rate is on a higher side and this one is also very important that the patient is having absent breath sounds and vocal parameters i hope you all have read this question carefully according to the above question below given is the chest x ray which of the following is the best answer this is part b this is part b but before you are going into the part b let me please know who is giving me the right answer i will give uh, candies to that 
person personally i will meet that person and i will give some candies to that or chocolates to that person yes tell me sudhi your answer is right very good beta lena very good ashi guru very good okay bhushan sir very good guru sir very good classic very good okay so guys let's see first of all is it a acute respiratory distress syndrome how many of you do agree with me yeah we will get the candy soon okay acute respiratory distress syndrome is it no this is not the answer see what are the causes of the acute respiratory distress syndrome the causes include direct lung injury and indirect lung injury right direct lung injury see acute respiratory distress syndrome is what patient should have a bilateral involvement of the chest patient should have there there is a balance criteria in ards right what is that ards criteria is called as that patient should have acute onset of breathlessness this is only one criteria second criteria is on chest x ray there should be bilateral infiltrate pcwp pressure pulmonary core wedge pressure should be less than 18 mm of mercury and the fourth one is very very important that the pao to fio2 ratio should be less than 200 anyhow this any of this clue was not given in the answer and so we have ruled out acute exacerbation of copd can this be the answer no this cannot be the answer although to make you confused over here chronic smoker can you know uh, detract you on thinking acute exacerbation of copd what why it is not the answer over here because acute exacerbation of copd does not present with chest pain right and acute exacerbation does not come after falling from the bike or there is no history of any trauma in co pd okay so we are left with these two options over here we are left with these two options over here pleural effusion and pneumothorax okay now let's talk about pleural effusion and pneumothorax what is pleural effusion what is beta pleural effusion pleural effusion is basically accumulation of the extra amount of fluid in the pleural cavity so this is the pleural cavity over here right this is the pleural cavity over here if the fluid start accumulating over here 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 the fluid is getting accumulating over here and it will keep compressing the lung over here this red one i am making the fluid over here it will keep compressing the lung over here right now this is this will lead to what on auscultation it will lead to absent breath sounds right and absent of vocal parameters agreed over here but pleural effusion can also present after trauma okay very good now but you know depending upon the pleural effusion it can be bilateral it can be a unilateral it can be transudative it can be exudative now transudative means non infectious exudative means infectious what are the causes of transudative first one is hypoproteinemia then we have congestive heart failure then we have nephrotic syndrome right hypothyroidism right these all the causes of transudative exudative means patient is having infective type like pneumonia tuberculosis malignancy meg syndrome chronic pancreatitis right these all are the causes now now why not pleural effusion because guys uh chronic smoker i am coming on the right answer the right answer is pneumothorax pneumothorax is what pneumothorax is what is pneumothorax guys pneumothorax is accumulation pneumo pneumo means what beta pneumo means what beta pneumo means air thorax mean in thorax so air in the thorax generally we don't have any air in the thorax cavity but if any cause can lead to the accumulation of the air in the thorax cavity that is called as pneumo thorax now pneumothorax can be of two types first of all it can be iatrogenic it can be iatrogenic it can be non iatrogenic it can be iatrogenic and it can be non iatrogenic 
So guys, can you please tell me something about pneumothorax? What are the causes of pneumothorax? Hanji guys, can you please tell me about pneumothorax? I am waiting for your replies. Hanji. Trauma, okay, Lina, very good. Anything else? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's understand this, guys. As I told you that the pneumothorax is atrogenic and non atrogenic, right? And the third one is it can be traumatic or it can, yeah. Traumatic, guys, I am coming over here. It is an atrogenic over here. Now it's a part of atrogenic. The other part it is called as font. Let me briefly explain you just a second, guys. I am revising it in a, a manner because I think uh, you people are not giving me a satisfactory answer. So let me uh, put this way. Just a second. Let me rub this. So guys, first of all, pneumothorax PT, I am writing pneumothorax. There are three main causes. The first main cause is called as traumatic. Traumatic pneumothorax. The second we have spontaneous, spontaneous pneumothorax and the third one is iatrogenic and the third one is iatrogenic. Now let's understand the what is traumatic. Now traumatic means trauma. Now trauma can be anything. Trauma can be an open trauma. It can be a closed trauma, right? Now closed trauma and open trauma. See why I am coming in the trauma first because over here in the question that the patient is a chronic smoker after a fall from the bike. Now this is a trauma. Now trauma can be an open trauma and it can be a closed trauma. Now open trauma means beta someone is coming from the behind and they have stabbed. Chhati mein ja, peet mein unhone kuch guseed diya. This is called as stabbing, right? Stab. It can be a gunshot, gunshot, right? It can be anything, right? Now, closed trauma is because like impact of something, impact of something. Now, suppose a person is going in a car and unfortunately they met with an accident. They were not wearing the seat belt, and suddenly he collides with the dashboard of the car and this dashboard gives the injury over here and due to the collision of that you know dashboard and the chest the ribs are broken and the broken ribs they injure what they injure the lung and the lung is ruptured now the air starts accumulating in the thorax cavity the same thing is occurring over here after falling from the bike maybe patient has fallen in such a manner that he just got hit with the roadside or maybe with the divider that they have given an impact and they broke the ribs over here and the broken ribs they got penetrated into the lungs and they got you know, pneumothorax over here. Now, what is spontaneous pneumothorax? Spontaneous means all of sudden. Now, this spontaneous pneumothorax, do remember this thing. It is mainly seen in the young, tall smokers. Young, tall man who is a smoker. Right. So, star mark question, always do remember. Spontaneous pneumothorax, young mein dekha jata hai. Tall smokers mein dekha jata hai. Right. Why it is seen? Because in young tall men, there is a tendency of blebs or bully. Right? Now, when this blebs and bullies they do rupture, there is a pneumothorax. Right? Then patient can have, you know, uh, 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 parasitic cysts. Some infectious causes like parasitic cysts, they can cause. Right? Some patients with pneumonia, they can have spontaneous pneumothorax, right? In neoplasias, 
these all are the causes of spontaneous pneumothorax iatrogenic causes means patient was a non smoker or maybe smoker patient had no tendency of developing you know the pneumothorax but unfortunately he got hospitalized and the doctor or the intern or the resident is putting some center line over here and when we put the center line sheet over there or maybe they are taking some biopsy over here they incidentally they touch the lungs over here and they made the lungs to rupture over here puncture kar diya unhone to usse ho gaya like so like doing a procedure doing a procedure procedure like central vein catheter insertion catheter placement or insertion right tracheal intubation tracheal intubation mechanical ventilation mechanical ventilation right now why mechanical ventilation gives pneumothorax see simply understand we do have a peep positive and expiratory pressure and we do have a tidal volume now upon the ventilator there we can set a tidal volume and we can adjust the peep also but if unfortunately someone increases the peep and someone increases the tidal volume peep means positive and expiratory pressure so if we give a higher positive and expiratory pressure the lungs are going to rupture and it can cause pneumothorax over here then some uh, procedures like biopsy of the lung biopsy of lungs can cause pneumothorax now can you please tell me patient is having a history of fall now understand the concept over here that there was a lung over here initially this was the lung over here then the air start accumulated over here this blue color is the air 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 now where is the lung over here the lung has totally you know collapsed over here the lung is collapsed over here initially the lung was over here now the lung has gone over here what is going to happen to the uh, you know uh, ventilation and the perfusion what is going to happen mainly with the perfusion the oxygen is not going to get perfused into the capillaries over here it is not going to dissolve properly over here or whatever the oxygen will come it will come in a lesser amount and lesser amount of the oxygen is going to be there in the blood so the saturation is going to drop over here that's why the saturation is on a lower side so the correct answer over here is d that is pneumothorax what is the answer pneumothorax okay so according to the above question below given is the chest x ray which of the following is the best treatment now i am just zooming this x ray first of all please have a look upon the x ray and tell me what is the abnormality of this chest x ray guys can you please tell me where is the abnormality yes haan ji kahan pe abnormality hai where is the abnormality this side abnormality or this side kahan pe hai abnormality yes haan ji the abnormality is on this side or this side bataiye i will show you the abnormality also guys yes yes i am waiting uh, waiting for your replies beta okay i agree with your point very good i am clapping for you guys can you please tell me what is the abnormality now now guys look over here can you appreciate this line coming over here ye wali line ye dekhiye ye line jo aa rahi hai right what is this ye line jo aa rahi hai what is this what is this guys this is the air which is present over here this 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 the whole area the whole area present over here i am just putting over here this is filled with air over here extra air this is the air which is collected after the trauma over here now you can see carefully over here so this 
rim of air is called as pneumothorax. Now, how you are going to appreciate this pneumothorax over here? First of all, there are no bronchovascular marking. Kya nahi hai, there is no bronchovascular marking. You can appreciate the bronchovascular marking over here upon the right side. You can see these white, 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 white lines. These are the bronchovascular marking. But upon the left side, particularly at this region, you can see lucency over here. This hyperlucency, it is called as what? This is lucency means black. Black means air over here. So this is a pneumothorax. Now, can you please tell me what is this pneumothorax? Hanji, bataye. What is the answer? So, guys, can you please tell me what is the answer over here? Here. So, guys, obviously the answer over here. It is going. We are going to do what? We are going to place the chest tube placement. So, the answer over here is chest tube placement. But do remember this thing, if, if pneumothorax is less than 20%, if it is less than 20%, patient is having a good saturation, then there is no need of putting the chest tube, no chest tube it needs to be inserted, no chest tube needs to be inserted over here. What we are going to give in that case, we are going to give high flow oxygen with venturi mask, high flow oxygen with venturi mask high flow oxygen with venturi mask do remember only in case when the pneumothorax is less than 20 percent there is no need of chest tube you can simply aspirate and you can give this high flow oxygen with venturi mask right they ask you a second question what is the site I am just giving you another question. What is the site for draining or aspirating the pneumothorax means tension pneumothorax patient ko? What is the immediate site? The immediate site is second intercostal space, second intercostal space, mid clavicular line, mid clavicular line in case of tension pneumothorax. But here, my dear friend, the answer is going to the chest tube placement because you can see over here a large amount of air is present. It is obviously it is greater than 20%. That's why here we are going to put the chest tube. Okay. Very good, Lena. Your answer is right. Pooja, very good. Guru sir, Stuti, very good. Okay. So let's go to the next question. Anji, let's go to the next question. A 45 year old patient presented with a bloody nasal discharge and recurrent upper respiratory symptoms. He suddenly developed palpable purpuric lesion and hemoptasis following which a CT thorax was performed. It revealed multiple cavitatory lesion as displayed here. The most likely cause is the most likely diagnosis is or the cause is. Anji, can you please tell me? I am just zooming this. This is the CT. Yes. There is a 45 year old 45 year old patient. They have nasal discharge means upper respiratory tract is involvement and recurrent respiratory symptoms are coming. Maybe patient is having cough, V, shortness of breath, right? And suddenly the patient is having some perpuric lesion and hemoptysis means the lower respiratory tract is also involved. Even in the, you know, uh, uh, CT, we can slice of the CT, we can see that there are cavities. CT thorax was performed and uh, obviously it is written that it is showing multiple cavities over here. Multiple cavities, these all are the cavities. The most likely diagnosis is, Hanji, the most likely diagnosis is. Guys, do remember only make it a thumb rule that upper respiratory, lower respiratory tract, if it is involved along with hemoptysis, it is going to be the Wegener's granulomatosis. Answer is going to be what? Wegener's granulomatosis. See, it can be tuberculosis. You are saying, right, okay. 
let me explain you one by one uh, why it is not tuberculosis first of all guys tuberculosis the patient must have a history of fever first of all to rule out tuberculosis there must be have history of fever patient must have history of cough with sputum right or okay let's say hemoptysis also i agree with your point but what is not seen in not seen in tb it is it is not seen in tuberculosis is this one purpuric lesions is not seen in tuberculosis so it is ruled out okay cavitatory metastasis okay cavitatory metastasis can be seen but why the nasal discharge is coming over there yes haan ji guys why this nasal discharge is coming over here हाँ जी गाइस सो व्हाट आर वी लेफ्ट विद कावासाकी डिजीज ओके लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट दिस वन फर्स्ट वैगनर गैलनोमाटोसिस व्हाट इट इज बेसिकली एन इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ द ब्लड वेसल्स सो व्हाट इज दिस वैगनर गैलनोमाटोसिस इज सिंपली वी कैन से इट्स द इन्फ्लामेशन इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ ब्लड vessels do understand this concept over here right now this wagner's granulomatous it's an polyangitis it's an polyangitis which can affect the ears nose it can affect the throat lungs and kidneys right it can affect the ear nose throat lungs and kidneys it is going to affect now once i have written it's the inflammation of the blood vessel understand the concept over here my dear friend suppose that there is a blood vessel this is a blood vessel here is the blood which is going on it can go the blood vessels is all over the body it is in the upper respiratory lower respiratory it is in the kidney it is everywhere in the body now i am just understanding making trying to explain you over here that what happens when there is some inflammation starts occurring over here inflammation will start occurring over here what will happen this will start getting weakened the vessels will start getting weakened and once they will start leaking down they will rupture and they will leak down had it hit in the lung it will come into the trachea and from trachea it can come out and what we call it as we call it as hemo pertussis over here nasal if the nasal you know vessels they will get inflamed and they will rupture patient will have nasal discharges or some you know uh, epistaxis can also occur over here patient can also present with hemorrhage urea but at your level please do remember that if there are cavities if there is hemoptysis if there is upper respiratory tract involvement of or is if there is any history of uh, uh, renal system involved and in the question it is written that the patient is having rbc is positive in the urine think of wegener's first okay ji haan ji guys below given ecg is of 68 year old man with heart failure whose complaints of nausea lethargy what is the likely cause yes quickly tell me guys i will really appreciate please give me your address i am going to send a gift to that person who is going to tell me this answer bataiye ji ji guys come on tell me i am waiting for your replies i will take the class up on the ecg and i will obviously going to make your life easier by just telling you the steps to interpret an ecg okay so let's discuss this question now
ओके सो गाइस मेजॉरिटी ऑफ यू पीपल इज गिविंग दैट दिस इज एन एक्यूट एंटीरियर वॉल एम आई बट ट्रस्ट मी इट इज नॉट द एंटीरियर वॉल एम आई आशी एब्सोल्युटली आई एप्रिशिएट योर आंसर यू हैव गिवन मी अ राइट आंसर ओके सी गाइस लेट्स लेट्स कोरिलेट दिस ईसीजी विद द एमसीक्यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दैट द पेशेंट इज अ केस ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर सो व्हाट आर द ड्रग्स वी डू गिव इन अ हार्ट फेलियर अमंग द ऑप्शंस प्रोवाइडेड ओवर हियर डू वी गिव डिकॉक्सिन यस वी गिव डिकॉक्सिन माय डियर फ्रेंड नाउ प्लीज लुक Please look at the ECG and tell me what are the finding. Guys, look at over here. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. look at here yes what is this called as this is called as reverse tick or it is called as down sloping it is called as down sloping or st depression right this is called as also a reverse tick sign right this is particularly seen in decoxin toxicity this is particularly seen in beer decoxin toxicity so the answer over here the patient must have been taken decoxin for heart failure and now the patient has presented with toxicity ecg was done and ecg has shown you know down sloping or st depression in v5 v6 so the answer over here it is going to be as decoxin toxicity see hyperkalemia causes tall t waves हाइपर एक्यूट टी वे वे टॉल टी वे इज नॉट देयर वाइज ओवर से यहां तो टी उल्टा नीचे जा रहा है बेटा ओके जी चलिए ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल कंप्लेन्स complains of severe headache she has experienced this headache since her teenage but over the past few years this headache has become more frequent and now occurs on weekly basis very interesting question the headache is unilateral throbbing and associated with nausea photophobia and phenophobia they last up to 24 to 48 hours right at a time she is taking oral contraceptive pills neurologically examination is normal MRI is also normal right which of the following is not advised for the prophylaxis of this patient's headache what is this patient dealing with yes tell me हाँ जी गाइज आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाईज लेट मी येस गाइज कैन यू प्लीज टेल मी वट इज द आंसर
ओके इफ आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू दिस क्वेश्चन वट इज एडवाइज फॉर प्रोफेल एक्सेस वट इज एडवाइज फॉर द प्रोफेल एक्सेस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट हेड एक येस नाउ लेट मी पुट दिस वे आउट what it advised there are two questions i am just putting my now forget about this uh, this one my question to you is this my question what is the treatment just forget about this question this line my new question to you is this what is the treatment what is the treatment what is the profile axis now before you answer me i have another question what is the diagnosis of this patient yeah so this is question number 1 question number 2 question number 3 so let's discuss yes tell me guys first of all haan ji so guys uh, probably you are giving me the right answers over here we know suma triptan topiramate propanolone amitriptyline just by reading the mcqs over here or just by reading the choices over here we can understand what this patient is dealing with this patient is dealing with migraine my migraine this patient is dealing with migraine now you see this patient is having headache over the past few days occur and this is mainly unilateral nausea photophobia and phenophobia and she is taking ocps ocps is one of the you know precipitant factor for the migraine neurological examination is always normal mri is always normal over here right now do understand this concept over here my dear friend right do understand the concept over here what is migraine what is migraine this is an episodic throbbing i repeat this is an episodic throbbing pulsatile headache i repeat kon kon sa beta episodic this is episodic throbbing pulsatile headache right which is associated with nausea vomiting dizziness right and it increases with light and sound it increases with what beta it increases with light and sound it is also associated with for uh, formification means zigzag lines in front of the eyes right so why it basically happens over here because there is an activation of the cells in the trigeminal nucleus there is an activation of the cells in the trigeminal nucleus which releases what beta it releases vaso active neuropeptides it releases what neuro vasoactive neuropeptides and this vasoactive neuropeptide is known as what calcitonin calcitonin now this calcitonin will cause what beta it is going to cause vasodilation it is going to cause vasodilation and due to this vasodilation patient is having what headache patient is having headache now comes to my question so now we have made the diagnosis that the patient is having migraine now if they ask do understand the concept over here if they ask what is that what is that treatment for acute attack treatment for acute attack acute attack of migraine do remember this thing for the acute attack uska sar phata ja raha hai to aapne kya dena hai sabse pehle usko anesthetics dena hai क्या देना है बेटा नॉन स्टेराइडल एंटी इंफ्लामेटरी ड्रग्स देना है लाइक यू कैन गिव पैरासिटामोल पीसीएम यू कैन गिव आइबोप्रूफिन यू कैन गिव आइबोप्रूफिन यू कैन गिव डाइक्लोफिनेक यू कैन गिव डाइक्लोफिनेक यू कैन गिव नेप्रोक्सन राइट नेप्रोक्सन यू कैन गिव और यू कैन गिव सेकेंड ऑप्शन यू कैन गिव ट्रिप्टान्स यू कैन गिव triptans like sumitriptan 
यू कैन गिव सुमी ट्रिप्टन यू कैन गिव रिजर ट्रिप्टन राइट थर्ड ऑप्शन यू विल ऑलवेज हैव ऑफ गिविंग डोपामिन रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिस डोपामिन रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिस यू कैन गिव राइट You can give dopamine receptor antagonist. Examples of dopamine receptor antagonist include metoclopramide, metoclopramide, chlorpromazine, chlorpromazine. Right. So these all are the drugs which can be given in an acute attack of migraine. now if they ask you the question what is the treatment for prophylaxis what is the treatment for prophylaxis so guys here we are going to give beta blockers like propanolol propanolol you can give metoprolol you can give propanolol metoprolol you can give amitriptyline amitriptyline nortriptyline nortriptyline you can give some anti epileptic drugs like valproate you can give anti epileptic drugs like valproate topiramate topiramate right so these all are the drugs which needs to be given in a case of prophylaxis of migraine guys see guys this were the some of the important mcqs which i needed to discuss in view of ini cet and you know neat pg examination as well as the foreign medical uh, uh, graduate examination right i hope you have enjoyed the session i really appreciate if you share your views about this class up on the messages and uh, any queries you can leave me the message right i am there to sort out all your queries and do consider me as one of your mentor i am here to take all of your worries and this is my responsibility to give you the success and to help you in getting the success till then keep on studying stay healthy and happy thank you very much and uh, namaskar to all of you thank you very much guys